What's up, Liron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, we'll be looking at works by Ekaterina Sava. She's originally from uh, Belarus, currently living in Italy, and she's a very well-known watercolor painter, especially within the watercolor community. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she is the head of the uh, watercolor society there in Belarus. And it's really funny because her husband, Igor Sava, is also a highly renowned watercolor painter, so it kind of reminds me of that uh, same thing with Chen Chung Wei and Jasmine Huang. So, uh, a couple that's both are amazing artists. So in this episode, we're gonna review her work. Um, this is gonna be a real treat for anyone who loves loose uh, floral paintings because that's a staple of hers and her mastery of wet and wet is really, really impressive. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into it and look at some of her works. So let's get started. As I mentioned, a real treat to anyone who loves florals, loose florals, and even sometimes more tighter and more accurate florals. But this, if I had to choose one of the, all of the paintings that I was looking at, this is really a good indication of what her style is all about. So as you can see, very good balance of focal point in the focus sharp versus the more blended blurry areas. Very good control of the gradual transitions, making the most out of the watercolor medium, using it to its fullest extent. One more thing I want to comment on, and you'll see it's a repeating kind of motif in many of her works, is very good control of color and saturation. So one thing that I really enjoy about her work is she knows how to keep the colors, saturation, and beauty, but also she knows how to arrange the different saturations within the painting, different areas with different levels of saturation, which allows for further enhancing of the focal point. If you look at, for example, the the concentrations of strong color, you get this very strong green here, very strong reds and oranges here. You get this little, I don't know, bud, budding flower with some strong pinks there. Just beautiful way of combining everything. And then if you look at the background, you get a bit more of uh, secondary colors, perhaps more purples, more oranges, more greens as well, uh, which makes it slightly more muted, but still quite, you know, uh, beautiful and saturated. So just this is a really a staple of hers and a really good representation of her style. Now you will see soon I did try and find some things that are more uh, different from her usual stuff just to keep it interesting. So here's another beautiful beautiful one. Look at all these gradual transitions here and you get a lot of interesting plays of warms and cools again. Um, here for example you get these blue shadows of the white. You know white is a beautiful color to add shadows to because you can really play around with their color and keep the watercolors transparency because they generally tend to be lighter. So you get this beautiful transition from cools to warms, back to cools. Even here you get a very subtle in this flower here, you get a very subtle uh, cool shadow on the right, warm shadow on the left. There is consistency to it, there is some sense to it and it really enhances the sense of light. Not to mention volume, three dimensionality, you know, all of that. And notice all of this loose, crazy red uh, down there, that's just beautiful. So I did want to, again, keep the variety going. So I made sure to find a couple of paintings that aren't necessarily the most common you'll find. I just looked at her Facebook page, by the way, I recommend you check it out. I'm going to link down everything below. Um, but yeah, here's a horse, beautiful horse. Um, all of the details of the mane and the, the fur, is that fur? I'm not even sure. Um, or just the hair hair, I guess, uh, and the beautiful definition of the, the, the muscles. It's really a f figurative work. Um, and notice the beautiful shadows here. What I love about her work is that her skill in wet and wet and really getting those gradual transitions uh, working and looking great, this skill translates to a multitude of subjects, not necessarily just flowers. Um, as you will see here, uh, here are some a couple of more flowers. You, we will we will get to see a couple of more flowers. Uh, I love the and then we'll look at some other uh, types of subjects. Some very interesting things. You want to stick around till the end. Uh, look at all these greens. Very um, strong, vibrant, almost artificial greens, um, which I find interesting. If you know me, you know that uh, in, in my art, you know that I'm not a big fan of artificial greens. But this is a good example of how in the context, in the larger context of the painting, they work well. And let me explain. So I just want to say this is an explain the green kind of thing. This is a highly, and not highly, but it is a somewhat artificial green. It's the kind of green you will get 
only when the subject is hit by very, very strong sunlight. Um, and even then it won't be exactly the same. It's usually achieved with a combination of cool um, cool yellows and cool blues. So you get, if you combine phthalo blue and lemon yellow, you'll get these types of marker-like greens here that you see. Uh, not this kind of green, but rather this one. Uh, down here. Now, the way it works in the overall composition is, if you look at all the other colors, almost almost none of them are as strongly saturated. So if you look at the, the pinks, they're mostly purples and muted down kind of violets. You do have a bit of this here that's very strong, but it's pretty much mostly muted. Same for the yellows, you get this, I don't know, dirty, ochre kind of look. Still looks beautiful and saturated, by the way. Within it, it works, all works together. But then, you get this green that's very saturated. So, in that regard, they work together, because if you increase the saturation on the green, she balances it out with decreasing the saturation on, on many other colors. I, maybe I'm reading too much into it, and maybe most of it is kind of uh, intuitive for her and for many artists, but I do think that's a, a big part of why, uh, a big part that's responsible for the beauty here. And it's a very common compositional uh, element that you can use to use several colors, but make sure to only increase the saturation on one of them. So this is why roses are such beautiful subjects or flowers in general, you can play around with the green and red. So very often you'll see paintings where the red is muted, but the green is strong, or vice versa. The it's two complementary colors that one of them is muted. Same for purple and yellow. Muted yellow, strong purple. Muted purple, strong yellow. You see? Uh, that's a very common thing to see. So here's just beautiful. Uh, another one. This is really the thing that impressed me the most about this. And I really thought about what do I want to keep uh, in the um, in the, the list of paintings I'm going to go over and what I'm going to leave out because I do try to make these videos, you know, not super duper long. Why The reason why I did leave it here is the beautiful rendering of the petals. Look at these two, the yellow flowers here. This is genius. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Look at this section here. The way she created those petals wet and wet, a bit of dry, uh, uh, wet on dry too, but mostly wet and wet. It's just genius. And this does require fine control because you need to make sure that this stroke stays, uh, doesn't blend, blend out too much and merges with this stroke. Th these white, ga um, white, these light yellow gaps, to preserve them, you have to put in, you know, wet here, wet next to it, but make sure they don't merge together. And she is a master of it. So that's one reason I wanted to include this. Look at this one as well, same flower obviously, uh, same type of flower, and you see these touches, they, 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 she preserved their individuality, which is what makes it this really great, in my opinion. And then another thing I want to show you is look at how beautifully the shape of this white flower in the middle is rendered. You really get a feel for the petals. You see, this is a petal, this is a petal, this is a petal. You, you see the individual petals. Now, they also work well together because you don't get... Uh, too much details. It's really clear that this pedal is the focal point and this pedal is, it's just done in such a great manner, you know. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next one. So here's another one. I wanted to keep the variety going. So here we have a painting that's more, um, you know, just still life arrangement. And it's just brilliant. Look at that. I actually hate this color combination, I'll admit. It's kind of the phthalo uh, green or phthalo blue together with burnt sienna. I never really liked that combination. I prefer it with French ultramarine with a warmer blue. However, if you look at the valleys and if you look at the arrangement of the still life, it's just beautiful. This especially, this area with the high contrast uh, light uh, here and then the, the back shadow. You know I love these kinds of things. Look at this, the shape of the, uh, the cups. Uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a handle. It's just done negatively by painting the background. Uh, this is a beautiful combination. Here you get to see more of the French ultramarine and burnt sienna. I do appreciate that it's my taste. I do um, understand and I have to mention it's my taste, okay? It's not that uh, the way she does it isn't good. It's my personal choice, which is why I don't like this color combination as much. But again, it's down to stylistic choice and, and the personal taste. And also, maybe that was the accurate color that was there and she was striving to uh, imitate that. Though I, I, I don't think so. She has a lot of, I think, imagination and changes things up a lot. But in any case, you know, just, just a, a side note. But now let's look at the next one. Uh, so here, this is one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorite florals in particular. 
a couple of things I want you to note here. This is really just genius. Two things. First, notice how these dry brush marks work well with the blurry background. It really creates, in my opinion, a good sense of volume. Uh, and it's as I shown you, I've shown you um, in what video was it? One of my recent videos, I showed you how. Oh yeah, yeah, the horses. Uh, I showed you how when I do the cloud of debris and I do it wet and wet, but then I also add some touches that are um, dry, wet and dry. You get this feeling of depth and layering because the blurry stuff looks appears to be in the background while the dry brush appears to be in the foreground. Um, for many reasons, by the way, the dry brush has a lot of details in it, um, but they're, they're broken. So they can actually be used for a foreground or for a background. Um, and then the wet and wet kind of goes to the back because it's very blended. So this is just genius use of that. Now, one more thing that I want to show you here. And you can see it in mostly this flower at the bottom and this flower is the genius uh, charging of paint into wet areas. So especially here, look at this flower. Here, this area was probably just a little bit, had just a little bit of water, just a bit moisture in it. And then she put in this um, probably very thick paint uh, into that. And you see minimal movement and it really <clears throat> works it really conveys the petals. Look at this brush mark here, brush marks rather, here as well. This one very gentle, you can see a little lighter. This one, it's just genius. Same goes for this. You see all of these strongly pigmented, strongly saturated, br thick paint brush marks that have been put into the wet and wet, uh, into the already wet area. That's really, really clever. Um, and I do plan on making a proper video on wet and wet of more experimentation type uh, where we play around with different timings. We wait for a set period of time, then a little longer, then a little longer. And then we use different thicknesses of paint and see what different results we get. This is really fine control. And and by the way, this is instinctual. If you're, um, if you're struggling with this, it's just a matter of practice. It's very hard to explain. You know the principle, more water, more movement more uh, the, the longer it, uh, time moves the drier it gets you combine these two and you un kind of understand what you should be doing but i know a lot of it is is frustrating and hard a lot of it comes down to just doing it so much that it becomes second nature so there really isn't a you know a magic formula and you get to see these formulas like joseph's book Fitch's book talks about the watercolor clock where you get the tea consistency the butter the all of that it can work in helping you understand it, but in order to really know and engage how much water you need, how much paint you need, you have to really um, do this so much that it becomes second nature. One last thing, look at this flower in the middle. This is beautiful. The, the Such control in the center within the wet area of really conveying the spiral of petals going inwards. And one last thing, look at how this flower just spills into the background. So it is all merged together, connected beautifully. Um, it's very easy on the eye. The, you can really move freely within the painting and have a lot of resting spots. This is just the best of watercolor, really. The best of wa watercolor paintings can, can be. Uh, here's another one. <laughs> this is just so good. This is one of the best florals. So I did want to save it for uh, close to the end of the video. Um, it's kind of similar to what we've seen so far, but the resolution is a little better, both the picture and the painting. I think it's just a larger piece, which allows for more details and a more complex uh, composition. And one thing I will say is the composition here. Notice how the you can um, you can judge it based on set criteria, and you can actually go one by one and and um, and see how well it works. So let's look at a couple of them values okay we get a very interesting combination of values here with dark up top and then it gets lighter as we move downwards with the tablecloth or the table itself just perfectly lit there's so much white here and that works very nicely with the scarcer white um white values or paper white at the top section now let's look at forget about values let's look at colors and saturation you get a very interesting combination of saturation these flowers are a little more saturated down the center but the more you move outwards they become a little more muted let's look at temperature you get very cool around the edges warmer as we get to the center even though this entire painting is quite cool you don't get a lot of very warm reds and it's mostly reserved to the areas in the very center like here and here 
and also a bit of that down here in the secondary focal point. Another aspect we can look at is the edges. So very sharp, strong edges here and very blended and smooth here. You see every criteria we take, we can judge the painting based upon and, and, and notice how there isn't a set rule for what's interesting and what's not. You know, usually uh, you will see m more, how shall I say it? You know what, that's very interesting. In fact, the, the, sh the edges here, and especially this, look at this beautiful dry brushy edge. Um, it's very clever because it automatically makes you focus more on the area with the sharp edges and kind of let the other blurry areas disappear into the distance. But then you get a trail of, um, of hard edges here at the top, then through this flower here, through this flower here, through this flower here, and it kind of leads you down into the secondary, or maybe it's meant to be the primary focal point down below. So it's a very smart way of leading us through the painting. There's a lot of things that go on into planning these works out. And a lot of it is intuitive. A lot of it is, I don't necessarily think about all of these things when I paint and sometimes the result ends up working beautifully. Uh, so I don't know how much thought was put into this one in particular, but there is definitely a lot of experience that went into this one. So, you know, experience does translate to intuitive uh, results. Uh, okay, so this one I really wanted to share with you. She shared it on her Facebook page, so I'm pretty sure it's her work because you don't see many of these types of paintings of her. She just doesn't probably do as many of these compared to florals. So I did want to share something a little different. Notice how her skills translate to this kind of a subject as well. Very good control of wet and wet and very interesting edges. I do believe her forte is florals, but you can definitely appreciate the, the beauty of this uh, just lovely look at all these greens i actually she made me love the the more artificial greens for some reason um uh, just beautiful beautiful work and uh lastly i think or is this one before the last yeah one before the last one is a surprise but you probably caught a glimpse of it uh, so this is a plain air work she did uh which is why i wanted to include it here you can actually if you go to her facebook page you'll see another picture of her holding up the painting um and here really you can see how it translates her talent uh, and skill in controlling the the edges translates to a landscape because you get these mountains in the background very blended very blurred but then around the center you get some harder edges and some stronger contrasts if you look at this hill it's a little lighter and you look at the background it's a little darker and also look at all these br dry uh, brush marks compared to the blended thing here in the background so this skill translates really well to different subjects as well. You don't have to do florals. Um, and I find this fantastic. These mountains are beautiful. And it's such a good way of indicating loosely the details you see. And very quickly as well, which is important for planner. And lastly, this one combines all of the things we talked about into something that's perfect. For me, that's a perfect painting. So you get a straw basket. In it are some onions, I assume maybe some garlic as well and so many things happen here simultaneously that look beautiful we actually should have analyzed this one based on the different criteria one thing i will say let's keep it short and brief this cast shadow is just genius because of the nature of the straw basket you get all these the lights shining through the the gaps between the different straws and elements of the basket and it casts this beautiful shadow here at the bottom right beautiful beautiful shadow that's also fairly even that's also done in one go look at all these these shapes are all merged and very often you'll find people overwork these shapes and it's very easy to overwork them but this is just one big shape with negative gaps of light between them on top of that, there's a great gradual change of color. We start with this kind of yellowy, mucky green, and then it moves on to more blue, and then it moves into more of a, a sepia kind of um, uh, burnt umber uh, type of color. So just beautiful and smart way of approaching this shape. But also notice the value. All the sunlight is hitting the onions, so you get this bright, strong orange. That, compares that contrasts beautifully with all of the cool colors here in the shadow. Look at this touch of, of a strong kind of, sorry about that. Again, we're back to the painting. I just pressed something wrong. Look at this, the touch of blue here. This is genius. This is really, really clever. Uh, this kind of a cerulean blue, I guess. Look at how it works well with these. And it's like, okay, so this is lighter than the shadowy part of the basket, but 
it's just so smart. You see, she could have gone with a yellow here to to uh, to express how it's lighter, but she decided, you know what, I'm gonna go with a light blue. So it's just genius. I have nothing else to add. Look at the, sh the edges. Um, you know, wet and wet edges, dry edges. Just so smart. And if you ever tried painting a straw basket or even drawing a straw basket, you know how challenging it is. It's really hard. There's so much going on, so many details, so many gaps. You have to be um, uh, on top of all everything else. And skill, you have to not be lazy. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, it's very hard for me to tackle these references because I'm sometimes very uh, I like the patience uh, necessary many times and this just goes to show you what amazing skills patience experience she has so with that that's a perfect point to wrap it up hope you enjoy this one so this is it for this one just very impressive work great control of the medium and I think the if there's like I like to choose one main thing to learn from every artist that I'm trying to learn from and from her that's definitely the edge control getting those beautiful varieties of wet and wets um, and, the, and making the most out of wet and wet as well because this is something that you may have noticed I'm starting to put more emphasis on uh, in recent painting so that's a huge thing for me to learn and notice how it really applies to every type of reference the cool thing is that if you learn from someone like her this technique you don't necessarily have to create florals to learn it you can apply it to anything like the landscape we've seen the plein air um, so that's really interesting to take a skill from an artist who specializes in one particular subject and then bring it into your world and use it for your favorite subject and that way you also make it your own so with that we're gonna wrap it up thank you so much for watching don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you still haven't I have tons of other episodes of this series as well as other painting tutorials and all sorts of videos and also leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts and if there are any artists you want me to review in the future and we'll talk to you again real soon Bye.